So, welcome to the latest update. I haven't done a great deal because I've been away for a few days and the weather's too nice to be messing around inside. Anyway, I've done a few bits and bobs. So, first off, I've got the belts fitted and here's some pictures of that. So, as you can see, the, um, the belts run in the very centre line of the x-axis, which means that I don't get any um, twisting effect when I tension the belts. Obviously, the belts need to be the same tension, but if they're slightly off it doesn't impart any twisting forces to the gantry so that's why i do it the way i do with two idlers on the y carriage and have the belts kind of like that above each other but dead on the center line so that's working quite well so next up was the um the filament uh roller holder mechanism thingy um, so I've made a plate that goes on the, that will go on the top of the machine. I haven't bolted it in place yet, but that's where it's going to sit. And then um, made these uh, these mounts and rollers. So there are two rollers at the bottom, sitting on uh, with um, bearings at each end, and they just drop onto the lower mount. And then there's a roller at the top on that that slides up and down. And that's just to stop the filament from coming off the top of the spool and getting all tangled up. Uh, so normally the um, the rear roller at the bottom is forward and that takes a normal one kilogram spool. If I want to fit the big two or three kilogram spools then I can move it to the back as you can see here. I guess the other biggest change I've made, oh a couple of things, the um, homing my my initial fast homing of Z, the way I used to do it before with a slinging up, swinging arm, I had that set as a trigger, and so I would do like a hundred mil move or something, eighty mil move or something, uh, and then check that the switch on the swinging arm was triggered or not. Um, if it wasn't, then I would do another um, eighty mil move at a high speed to get it somewhere close. Um, I thought with this one, I'll just home it. I'll just change the homing switch to be the slotted opto switch. And then I can do a single homing move to that switch at high speed. But I have to run full motor current to drive the bed at high speed. So uh, and so that's why I, what I want this um, initial switch to get the position somewhere close. I don't want to run high speed and slam it into the nozzle just in case the nozzle um, switch fails for any reason then it would slam into it at high speed with full motor current which will do a bit of damage so i do an initial homing move at high speed at full current to the first switch and then a subsequent homing move at, at medium speed <laughs> to the nozzle and then the fine at slow speed to the nozzle but the problem with doing using a homing move rather than a, um, like a 100 mil move is that it stops instantly as soon as the trigger stops. So when you're moving the you know, great big heavy bed at highest speed and then stop it instantly with no deceleration, um, it's not good it makes a huge big clunk and um, could end up damaging the lead screw and all the lead screw nuts so i've reverted back to my original way of doing it by basically doing a series of fast moves so i do a fast move check if the slotted opto switch is triggered if it hasn't then repeat and run that loop until the it sees the slotted opto switch. and then that gets me within 80 mil it could be less uh, but it won't be any more so within 80 mil and then and then a home in the normal way. So to do that, I had to increase the length of the flag that goes on the slotted opto switch that sits on the carriage, but that's what the slotted opto switch sees. So that's about 100 mil long. I had to position it so that if the nozzle is already close to the bed, it will look at the slotted opto switch, and if that's already triggered, then it won't do this initial fast move. So here are some video clips of uh, homing now, which is um, as far as I've got with it.
So the other thing I've done is I've um, I've moved the bed, the whole bed. I've moved it back. Uh, the reason is that that when I home Z, I have to heat the nozzle to soften any plastic. I like to wipe it as well, and I've always had a a wiper at the back of the bed. But that's a bit of a pain to get rid of the bits of plastic that you've got rid of. I used to have a shoot on it and stuff but it all happening at the back of the bed is kind of awkward and I thought well why not have it have it happen at the front so instead of the wiper strip being across the back of the bed it's going to be across the front and it'll just make it easier for me to to deal with I haven't exactly decided how I'm going to do it yet not previously used a silicon strip which worked well enough I might stick with that but um, it looks kind of clamped between two pieces of aluminium to keep it rigid. Um, I might do something different, I'm not sure. But anyway, rather than have um, the print head overhanging the back of the bed, I've moved the whole bed backwards a bit so the print head can overhang the front of the bed. I've got about 415 mil of movement in Y and the bed's only 400. So, And then the other big change I've made is um, I, I kind of thought about these two no-go areas I've got in the front left and right corners where the print head will clout on the motor body so I just thought about it I'd, actually I can I can get around this I don't need to have those no-go areas if I move the motors up so that's basically what I've done is I um, I turned the, the shaft in the tensioner the pulley shaft I've turned that 180 degrees so it sticks up rather than down put the the motor pulley on the top rather than on the bottom and then I made new motor mounts and moved the whole motor up so that the belt from the motor to the drive shaft is at the top rather than the bottom which means that now there's no no go areas there's nowhere where the print head will collide on the motor mounts so that's about it that's about as far as I've got um, just need, need to make some I want to make some new clamps for holding the glass on the bed um, and then there's still the other things like panels and lights and, and all that. But there's not really anything that's um, stopping me from starting a print now. So uh, apart from the fact if I print anything in kind of ABS that's a bit big. Um, because the printer's not enclosed in any way it might um, curl up. But I can print um, PETG without any problem I would have thought. Oh the other thing I haven't done. I haven't given it all that much thought. Is I haven't got any kind of uh, part cooling solution fitted there are a couple of mounting holes on the front of the lgx ace that i can use um, but i haven't decided um, how best to do that that's something else i've got to think about i don't use part cooling fan much because i don't print pla much something else i'm gonna to have to add anyway that's it for now and uh, i hope you might have seen something interesting or useful and thanks for watching see you next time cheers bye um, oops, um, this is a late edit because I forgot something important um, and also my lapel mic seems to have broken so it's going to sound differently as well um, so I'm just talking in straight into this thing so the sharp eyed amongst you will have noticed that um, I've abandoned the 40 tooth pulley on the drive shaft uh, 
two reasons for that. One, the motors were quite noisy running at double speed. Um, not excessively so, but bearing in mind that this thing is in my study and my bedroom is just there. If I run an overnight print, it needs to be quiet. So that was one thing. But more importantly, um, something I completely overlooked, which I wasn't really aware of, um, is back EMF due to rotation. So basically the faster you spin a motor, the more back EMF it generates until you get to the point where the back EMF is the same as the supply voltage and won't go any faster. So I plugged the numbers in using that one to two gearing, or two to one, whichever way you want to look at it, um, into the calculator that there's a link to on the Duet forum. And it showed that the maximum speed I would be able to get would be around about 200 millimeters a second. And I like to do travel moves at sort of 300, 350 milliseconds. So for those two reasons, I've abandoned the big 40 tooth pulley and just put a 20 tooth pulley on with a shorter belt as well. And so I've just got one to one gearing now. Um, so yeah, that's the thing I forgot to say. Um, so that really is all for now. And that really is bye for now. Cheers.